if we say a trait is 50% heritable, we, it has a heritability of 0.5. That means half of the, the difference between individuals in the population is due to genetic differences between them, and half of the differences between individuals in the population is due to their upbringing. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a, a resistance to what you're saying in that it's reductionistic. It all comes down to the survivability of the group as the basic value. Now, I can understand evolutionary mm-hmm. speaking. Mm-hmm. We don't survive all well, well, right. that's the point. But this would you would tend to argue now, and I think there's a book on this right now that says rape is a positive value because those people have more children than the people that don't rape. By the same time, I'm thinking if the Germans had won the Second World War, democracy would not be as good as national socialism. But I'm not sure that we'd all agree that those values are one on one related to survivability. You're dropping the bomb on the on uh, Hiroshima, for example, makes us the good guys and them the bad guys, although that's the way we tend to see it. But if you follow what I'm, I'm saying... I'm not sure rapists have greater reproductive um, Okay, well, you could, you could argue that, but I'm yeah. saying this particular book argues that that's why the rape, that the, the seed gets spread more. Okay, well, you, that, that certainly could, um, could be. Um, uh, in many organisms... We could see their reproduction as being nothing more than than rape. Um, in many organisms, the the females uh, resist until they okay. until they can't. Okay. But what, what I'm saying is that the reduction to survivability as a fundamental value places that as sort of the test. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whereas the religious person, which I think the contrast here is, has some kind of external divine or platonic image that good is separate from survivability or, or you know genetics and so well, forth. Well, uh, that's that's certainly a, a, a point of view, but um, the, the we we can see how um, non selfish behavior good uh, behavior, behaving well uh, toward other individuals certainly can benefit the individual. And so it, I don't see that as being... Well, this, this, this is Jeremy Bentham's argument, mm-hmm. which is a basic philosopher among American mm-hmm. ethic thinkers mm-hmm. and common thinkers, that being non-selfish is good because it spreads the... Mm-hmm. Okay? But it's also selfish in the long run because, yes. okay, I survive yeah. because my grandchildren have right. a chance right. of making it and right. so forth. But that's still, that's reductionistic as well to self-interest. And you're talking about reductionistic to group interest, right? Mm-hmm. Now, they're more human well, beings I mean, now I mean, no, it's ultimately, it ultimately comes down to the self because the individual does better because the group... The, the group does in, better. Okay. Yes. okay. Well, to bring, bring this back to our topic of morality without religion, right. what you're describing in the way we derive good and bad has nothing to do with written word or presumed word handed down from some higher authority and you're saying that what what is generally accepted in a group as good is unrelated to the supernatural is that what you're saying yes i think he's saying that we're going to turn this for you. We're going to make sense of this that, somehow. That human empathy basically is innate, and that that's what gives us moral behavior. Because, and I have a quote here. I, I, I want to read this from Albert Einstein, um, who was what Time Magazine's man of the, the century. Century, yes. Um, a man's ethical behavior should be based effectually on sympathy, education, and social ties. No religious basis is necessary. Man would indeed be in a poor way if he had to be restrained by fear of punishment and hope of reward after death. Well, right, that's simplistic. It's just that it's very simple. I think we all have morals of some of some sort, and and if the only reason we don't kill or maim other people is because we're worried about being punished after death, then that's not being moral. But, What's being moral is doing something because you know it's the right thing to do. But we don't, we're not moral because we know our species has got a better chance of surviving, even unconsciously. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Our morality is not linked to either one of these necessarily. 
Now, also, I heard a preacher on the radio, I do listen to them sometimes, say that he found out that Albert Einstein cheated on his wife and he no longer was going to believe in the theory of relativity. Now, there's obvious to say that he said that. Now, there's, I don't know if he was in jest or not, but I thought it was a good quote. But it's, it shows the disconnectivity between ideas. It makes no difference what Albert Einstein did cheating on his wife as to whether his theory is true or not, right? They're definitely disconnected. Disconnected. Now, is our morality connected to our evolutionary past? I think you would have a hard time not arguing that. Obviously, that has to have some connection. It's certainly, and so is our religious background. Religion is a human trait. The religious people survive more than non-religious people. There are more of them. Yeah, absolutely, and there's a presumably a part of the brain uh, that uh, the, the God, that's the spirituality yeah, the God part of your brain. Yeah, right. Well, let me uh, let me just read you something that comes from the the, uh, the uh, Richard Dawkins' current book, The God Delusion. He says, "If you take religion away, what are you going to put in its place? What have you to offer uh, uh, the dying patients, the weeping bereaved, the lonely Eleanor Rigby's for whom God is their only friend?" Religion's power is to cons- is power to console doesn't make it true. Even if we were conclusively demonstrated that belief in God's existence is completely essential to the human psychological and emotional well-being, even if all atheists were despairing neurotics driven to suicide by relentless cosmic angst. None of this would contribute the tiniest jot or tittle of evidence that religious belief is true. See, that's it nice. might, Let me finish. Okay, go ahead. It might be evidence in favor of the desirability of convincing yourself that God exists, even if He doesn't. That's masculine thinking to reduce it to whether it's true or false. Scientific masculine thinking. If feminine thinking, I don't mean necessarily women, but feminine thinking would say the basic value is caring for another person. And if believing in God is a way of caring for another person, it's a different standard. You follow me? It's not a matter of it being true or false. It's a matter of having a different standard. Are we, are we, are we saying, as secular humanists, which is whom we are, that we have a set of morals that comes from a source other than the, the infinite, but the set of morals that religious people have uh, is equally valid? It, no, I don't know if it's equally no. valid or not because of the standard of validity is what I'm questioning here. Is it equally as effective? This argument is that it's right. not. And if the standard is caring for and giving support and solace to someone who's dying, yes. then that's the standard. It's a different standard. Now, where does the fact that that standard is true and this standard is not true come from? If not from your basic values. Well, do people lose something if 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 previously they thought when people died they went to a better place and they were on the right not hand of God, but, right. and then come to realize as we do that that there is no better place? Uh, is it better for them just to to go on with their former beliefs? Well, who should decide that? I don't know who. Who should decide? Well, I think the person should decide that. Obviously, a lot of people have decided that it's better to believe. I, I didn't see the, the, the quote from Dawkins as, as, as being um, entirely masculine. As, as, as well, the way, I'm using what, that label to well, say it's what, rational. What, what okay? he said was, uh, as I understood it, was is that something can be scientifically true or it can be scientifically false. Um, Whichever whichever way it is um, uh, doesn't necessarily have uh, a bearing on whether it's it's valuable to us, and and I think that gets to your feminine thinking point in that uh, in that giving solace to to uh, a person that, well, that needs it is is definitely valuable um, to us. Even if the solace that you're you're giving is based in something that uh, is scientifically um, false. All right, my point, and I'm not going to bother quoting the source here, but you can understand that it's, there's work been done on this. Most ethicists, most people who've written about ethics, have been men. In fact, I can't name but one woman who even was a philosopher. 
okay? And this particular critic of the system that I, that I earlier talked about, the levels of moral development said that the problem here is that it's a masculine standard, that women, and the, the, some people think that women are more feminine than males are, I don't think that's always the case, but that women automatically 